Welcome to our first uh, global virtual event uh, for women in VFX. My name is Shana. I'll be the monitor, moderator today. Um, so I've worked in visual effects and post-production as a supervisor, producer, and artist uh, in both Los Angeles and New York City and New York State for over 20 years. Um, I mainly work in live action, feature films, and episodic TV. Um, I've, walked, I've worked at uh, small, small mom and pop type companies all the way up to the largest post-production global companies in the world. And now I own my own post-production and visual effects company here in upstate New York. I also teach at Syracuse University and I'm in charge of building the visual effects and post-production curriculum there. My focus is to mentor people in visual effects and post-production and help them understand the industry to build confidence in their skills, as sometimes it's hard to find support at the workplace. Um, so about a year and a half ago, when the world went into lockdown, a Discord group was formed and I found it. Uh, and it was to bring the women in visual effects, in the visual effects industry together from around the world and find more people like ourselves. With remote work becoming the norm, I found this group to be an amazing way to expand my network uh, since we couldn't do in-person events anymore and to offer mentorship to those entering the industry and looking for guidance. So I'd like to introduce Emma who created Hi. the Discord group and she's briefly gonna talk about the group's origins and hopefully point out some of the core team members here today. Great, thanks so much. Um, so yeah, so WVFX was started during the first lockdown. So that was about a year and a half ago. Um, and actually a lot of the women in my office, uh, Morgan being one of them, um, helped me set it up and get it going. Um, and get going, it did. Lots, uh, lots of people started joining more than I actually had anticipated. And what the great thing about it was, is it served its purpose, it did exactly what it, I wanted it to do, which was just finding more women just like me in the industry, looking for um, a, a lifeline or a helping hand or, or somewhere to go to find someone similar to them um, to bond and really become uh, this sort of open community uh, and a safe place to talk about anything really. Um, the lovely part about it is there's, there's no hidden agenda, there's no unwritten rules, there's no, there's no right or wrong. Um, and Morgan's actually set up these, these, these really organized, well uh, created, really organized, well created uh, channels that really speak to the chilled out vibe that happens in WVFX. And I think that's what I've spoken to uh you know all the panelists about in the past why this has been successful is that we're we're just open and and we're happy if it, if it was a physical place i sort of imagine it's a bit like when simba lands in the desert and is saved by timber uh pumbra and timon and he opens and, and you know you see this vista if you were to walk in there's there's tables there's chairs and there's you're welcome to sit at any any single one of them it's like a all you can eat cafe um, with all the coffee you could possibly want and all the chat about visual effects you could possibly want. And it's not me who's done that, it's the community who, who's, who's joined, which is, is the lovely part because just sitting back and watching it happen, I know that if, if I don't log in that day, the women are still talking and they're still going. So there's really a need for it and a, and a want for it. Um, and yeah, really that's kind of the the rounding sum, sum up of it um, and hopefully I hope this panel goes as well as Discord does and everyone who's here today joins in and we keep it going and we keep vibrating and keep making it like a beehive and, and, and take it further so eventually these events can be bigger and hope, you know possibly in person one day I could just picture an event room full of hundreds and hundreds of us um, taking the world by storm um, and, and that would really I'd re yeah, that would be amazing. And what's what's lovely is that I've met all of these panelists, so we can uh, get to know them now. Um, I'll hand it over back to you guys to introduce yourselves. Great. 
So I just really wanted to thank Emma and her team for creating such a unique space for us all to come together and discuss uh, these issues that have been around for such a long time in our industry uh, affecting women, especially uh, topics like maternity leave and mental health, work-life balance and mentorship. It's, it's rare to have groups that focus on those kinds of issues. And I feel like this is one of the more engaged Discord groups that I've ever been a part of. So uh, it's not solely for job opportunities and tutorials and just tech help, but it's an actual community of people. It's kind of like what happens when you step away from your desk at the company and go into the kitchen and kind of hang out for a little bit. It feels like that. Um, so uh, from that, I decided that uh, I wanted to meet some of these people some of these amazing people and hear their stories in person uh, to put like a face to the discord name. So that's where these virtual events started to stem from. So the goal is to try to have around three to four events throughout the year um, to try to uh, highlight some of the topics that have been in the discord group in the community and uh, bring them to light. Um, so today our topic is confidence in the workplace. Um, so for the next hour, we'll have a guided discussion um, on self-empowerment in the workplace. Uh, so we have a diverse group of women here from our Discord channel uh, that um, we want to discuss things that we learned when we were entering the industry um, and tips that we want to share with either our past selves or with people who are just getting started right now. Uh, so hopefully those of you who are new to the industry can learn from our experiences and other people who have been in the industry for a while can also share your experiences and add to our conversation. Um, I also wanna recognize Priscilla who is our tech support. Um, so she'll be moderating the chat. So if you have questions and you don't want to save it to the end, please pop it in the chat and she'll help uh, me recognize if there's a question that we should answer during the event or if we should do it right at the end. Um, also, uh, at the end, we will open it up and you can either chat your question or say it out loud. Um, we're also recording this for anyone who can't be here today live, um, but if there is a topic that you want to talk about off the record, then uh, we're going to stay after the recording's done and uh, you can ask us there. Um, but if a topic comes up and you want it, like, please don't put this in the recording that you're going to put up, then just let me know and uh, we'll edit it out. Um, so. With that, uh, I'd like each of our panelists to quickly introduce themselves, give a short little bio of how you got here um, and your career path and everything. So Emma, do you wanna start? Yeah, cool. So uh, Emma Taylor, <laughs> um, I started as a runner about 11 years ago, I think it's been, uh, in New York actually. Uh, which is a great way to start because I just literally saw how the company worked from the ground up. I mean, you meet so many people being a runner because you, you're in their area, you're in their space helping them out. Um, I wouldn't have wanted to start any other way. And, and it, was, it was a good way actually to build my confidence, uh, which, which I'll talk about later. Um, and then I made my way over to London. I did a bit of film work. Um, this is all as a DMP artist, literally learning um, how to clone stamp to begin with from a new compositor. <laughs> and then uh, working my way into now, I know uh, how to make environments in Unreal. Um, so it's been a big, big journey for me over the last year um, and a big confidence boost actually. But um, in terms of where I was and where I am now, um, it's just, the industry has just opened up so many new doors and constantly is changing. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm extremely happy where I am now. Um, I'm in London and um, yeah, that's me. Cool, Laura. 
Yeah, hey, sorry, my computer went on mute for a second. Uh, hi guys, I am Laura Homan. Uh, I started off in the industry just over 10 years ago. Um, I thought I was gonna move into visual effects. Uh, so I started off as a intern at a VFX house out in Los Angeles, which is where I'm at. Um, a couple months into my internship, I got a job offer for an animation studio. Uh, I wasn't really getting any other job offers, so I took it and I've kind of stayed in animation since then. Uh, it's been, so it's kind of like a sister industry with you guys, uh, but I kind of moved up the ranks in uh, texturing and look development, uh, working at lots of animation houses in Los Angeles, uh, and then just kind of moved up from artist to lead. And now I'm a CG supervisor, um, which is a lot of fun. And I'm just really excited to be here and share experiences with all these amazing women and men who are here and uh and yeah that's that's pretty much my background great thank you Anne. hi um my name is Anne, and i've been working in the industry for about 15 plus years i presently am an unreal lead at scanline vfx but for most of my career i've been a compositor I currently work in Vancouver, but I've worked in different cities just due to the nature of our industry being contractual. Um, my background is a rather motley mix of things. I started off as a musician, uh, a violinist, then I moved into theater as a stage manager, then I changed direction, then went into environmental studies and studied the social of the environment, which concentrates on things like climate change and bringing that to the forefront of society. Then I changed again, I sort of just fell into being an operations agent at the airline before switching into visual effects. And one of the reasons why I went into visual effects was uh, a friend of mine was interested in it, went and I met this man named Larry DeFlorio and I have to give him kudos that, that he gave me. He just said, I said, I'm interested in it. And he said, oh, well, you should just apply. And so I thought, why not? And did it. and. Here I am today. And now recently I've moved Lattery into virtual production. And one of the reasons why I agreed to be a panelist today because, because I think confidence is so very important for women. Um, let me give you an example. Recently I was in a meeting with 12 people, only three being women. And I noticed that every time a woman spoke, they started off with, I'm sorry, I may only be uh, like a production person or whatever. And this sort of, dismayed me after a while because why did we feel like we had to self-deprecate um because self-deprecation when it comes from sovereignty already exists in the margins is not humility it's more like humiliation and i feel like why would i have to put myself down in order to speak it's like i'm seeking permission to speak so i thought that we shouldn't do this anymore and that empowerment is the key so i thought this would be a great forum to talk about that yeah Great, thank you. And Kirsty. Hi, I'm Kirsty. Um, I started off like most as a runner in a post house and then worked my way up into a machine room. Um, and at that time, it was very male dominated, that room, um, as a lot of the machine rooms that were in a lot of post houses. Um, and then I worked into, got into grading, um, became a grading assistant. And then I did a bit of a leap and went to the production side and started as a production assistant and then worked my way up to becoming a producer director. Um, and like Anne, I feel very much the same in that women have a bit of a bigger battle with confidence. And I think it's really important that we get it out there that, you know, it is something that we all have inside of us and we just need to work out how to get it. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy to be able to be on this panel today. Great, thank you. And don't mute yourself because you're first. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so our first question for the panel and Kirstie's gonna lead us off. Uh, how do you believe in your skills and build your self-confidence in the workplace? I think it is quite a hard one. Um, I think some people are naturally just born with a bit more confidence than others, but I do believe that it is something you can learn over time. Um, and I think time is a big factor in that, you know, be patient with yourself. You know, you can get there. Everything is a learning process and every bit of experience you have can build into that 
Um, I think, you know, most people just don't champion themselves enough with everything. Um, and we just dwell on, you know, the, the negatives too much. And I think if we actually focused on the positives way more, I think that will 100% make you more confident you know just at the end of the day rather than looking at all the things that may have gone wrong if you look at all the things that went right they're gonna outweigh that but just I think as human beings just naturally we're just oh you know I should have done that better I should have done this you know and rather you know you don't even just you know give yourself a pat on the back for the small things you know even if it's just like turning up on time or you know oh I actually made that person feel better about this today you know I think mindset is a big part of that you know it's changing the mindset and being more positive will just kind of give you that confidence in itself I think another thing that really helps is your teammates um I've been quite lucky with the teams that I've worked with in in each part of my career um and they constantly were like you know helping me or telling me I was doing a good job you know even when I did do some hiccups they were always there to help pick me up um and I think you know when you're in big companies especially it you can feel a little bit like you're replaceable or you know you're not you're not picked up on a lot so there's kind of an internal struggle of like well am I really that good am I really good at what I can do you know and I think it's, again, those teammates, again, that's why they're so important because they are the ones who are watching you grow, seeing you develop and the ones that can reinforce, you know, you are doing a good job, you know, and I think you just, you need to listen to those people who are closest around you. I think that's really important. Um, there, um, was there a time as you were learning how to be a director where you felt that that had a switch for you? Um, was it, can you think of a, a sort of moment where you're like, oh, wow, I've, I've just nailed that? I think a lot of the time it's when you look back at the work that you've done, you know, the end product, it's kind of like, it's, oh, I've made this thing and it's actually really good. Um, a lot of the time when you're going through the process of getting to the end result, you're not really thinking about the bigger picture you're just in that moment and you know if anything small does go wrong or you've not got what, quite what you needed again you can you can end up focusing on that and you're going oh I'm going I'm doing a terrible job and if you get in, caught up in that cycle you know you it's it's hard to get out of um but yeah I think once if you've changed that mindset again you know you, you look back and you go oh actually I did a really good job and this is the evidence that you know if that's somebody telling you that you've done a good job or the end product is great you need to sit and like sort of revel in it and go okay if I've done this I can do something again or I can do something similar um because I think that's also part of the problem is a lot of the time you're doing new stuff you know something that you might not have done before and that's where you get a little bit like, oh, I don't know, I, I might not be able to do that. And, you know, particularly for women, you know, they've done all the research and, and sort of shown that men all overestimate how good they are, or, you know, how good a job they can do or their skills and, and women will underestimate. And actually the end result that, you know, they're doing an equal job. And I think with women, it takes a lot longer to get to that confidence because you need more you fit you feel like you need to have all that experience to do the unknown you know but actually if you just have a bit more faith in yourself and go you know actually maybe I've got some transferable skills that will help with this you know and you make that bit of a jump you give it give yourself a bit of faith and you can prove yourself wrong um and again it's only by doing that you're ever going to sort of really learn what you're capable of Anyone else have a follow-up? Well, I suppose that that just really ties in with the next question. Because um, a lot of what Kirsty says, I might be repeating a bit, but in a slightly different format. If you, um, did you want to? Yeah, so our next question, which is very relatable to it, um, unless Laura, did you have something you wanted to add to this part? Okay. Um, so 
our next question was, how do you get over your fear of failing when you don't know how to do something? So exactly what Chrissy just brought up. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go start off with uh, something she said about statistics of men and women applying for jobs. Stats say that men will apply for jobs when they only meet 60% of the qualifications and women will apply for a job only if they meet all 100%. And there's a few reasons why women are wise to potential failure. One is that there's evidence that women's failures are remembered longer than men's or more than, so than men's. For example, Hillary Clinton. Um, a McKinsey report found that men are often hired on the potential on their potential and women are hired for their experience and track record. And in the 20th century, we saw a lot of women break into professional life, but only if they had the right training, the right accreditations. And these qualifications were like our ticket into proving that we could do the job. Uh, since we weren't really part of an old boys club where we were given the benefit of a doubt, we had to kind of prove it with accreditations. And then the last thing is that girls are strongly socialized to follow rules and then are rewarded for that. Like for instance, in school. And that's usually why we do better in school than boys because we can follow these rules. But then that in the end can kind of hurt us because we get so used to adhering to rules that then we go, well, these are the rules to apply for this job. I need to fit all the rules before I can apply. So all these biases have created a failure uh, uh, a fear of failure. And so what do you do? For one, stop apologizing. <laughs> um, be diplomatic, but you don't need to self-deprecate and undermine yourself. If you change your language and sound more confident, then you'll be perceived as more confident. So then it, you'll have a bit less of a fail, uh, fear of failure. And then I have all these points. My friend, Alyssa Zarate, she's an environment and matte painting soup at Sony. And she came up with some really amazing tips on addressing the fear of failure. For one, be prepared to adapt. And this ties in exactly with what Kirsty was talking about. She goes, uh, when she said, remember you have learned enough, you have created a foundation of knowledge and then learn from that knowledge and grow from that knowledge. You don't need to know everything because no one knows everything, but you can learn and learning is growth. For example, um, I was a compositor and I did not know Unreal a year ago. And then I wanted to learn. So I uh, luckily got into the fellowship and got a five week crash course. And I had this foundational knowledge of Unreal in filmmaking. And then I went and pushed my company to hire me into Unreal saying, hey, I know this even if I didn't know all of it, and I didn't fit all of the parameters that they were looking for. I said, I know enough and I can learn the rest. And that's how I got to change my career. Uh, secondly, determine your priorities. You have to think of what you actually want to do, then fight for it. You can't just fight for anything and everything. You have to really want to do it, right? So I really wanted to change my career out of compositing and I wanted to learn new tech. So my short-term goal was learn Unreal. And then my long-term goal was work in Unreal, which now I do, which you know took me a year to get there though. And I really did have to fight for it. Um, sorry, Emma, you had a question? Um, yeah, I saw what, uh, what was really interesting when I was sort of writing notes about what to say in this panel, I came, I came to the same conclusion also. It's, it's about how to believe in your skills is difficult when you're, you're sort of, I, I feel like we're taught men and women actually are taught to kind of be a bit uh, humble and almost it's almost shameful um when you're too confident right like if you're and in in, in an industry where you want to get i don't want to talk too much about because i'm going to talk about later but where you want to get promotion or whatever it's hard to kind of feel like you're allowed to boast about your skills because it's sort of like you you're used to being like oh no you know i'm okay <laughs> when really you want to be like yo i'm really really good give me a promotion but it's, it goes so naturally against what, and I say we, I, I do mean, I, I kind of mean everyone, um, but, I, you know, women, especially, I think we're sort of like, you know, be the nice person, don't be too boisterous. Um, as, you know, I think that's actually changing now in, in the modern era with this cancel culture, but I, I really do relate to that point. So I just wanted to, uh, you know, in, yeah, agree and also say, there's a lot of shame involved. Um, and that's what I think makes it hard when you are someone who doesn't believe in your own skills. 
Well, that ties in with like my next point actually is communication. So how you communicate and how often you reach out is just as important getting over your fear, fear of failure, sorry. So how you communicate, for instance, if you're an asshole to everyone, then you better be 100% right all the time or else <laughs> every time you do something wrong, you will be slammed down. So if you are humble enough, but not afraid to ask, then mm. that is key to communication. Also, how often do you reach out? Like, for instance, you can't be afraid to tell your production that I'm not going to be able to finish this shot because mm-hmm. there's a lot of reasons why you may not be able to. For instance, you got all your elements late. You haven't, your shots due at six o'clock. You got your elements at five, not going to happen. So you just have to say, hey, I just got my elements. It's not going to happen. And they will easily, like, they will work with you to change it. But if you don't tell them and then you fail, they won't know that you didn't get your elements till five. And then they'll just think, oh, you're not doing your job. You're not reliable. So communication is key to like not getting over that fear of failure, because then you're saying, I can't do it. Well, yes, I can't do it, but it's not, you're not failing is the point. And then that ties in with the next one, which is seek out and then accept help. So be proactive. When I started out my career, one of the most important pieces of advice I've ever been given is that if you can't figure something out and within 15 minutes, ask for help and don't be afraid to ask. Because if you sit there all day and can't figure it out, then again, you're actually failing. Whereas if you ask for help, then you might get the help you need to succeed. And then you've learned, again, that ties in with learning and then you grow and then you don't stagnate. And then, you know, it's all ties into you growing. And then that goes into the next point, which is support each other. You are part of a solution in creating an inclusive work environment. And the more part of a team you feel like you are, then the less fear of failure you have. And last but not least, and I think Kirsty pointed this out, was like, be enthusiastic and don't take yourself too seriously. Because if you, um, if you fail and you're like, oh my God, I'm so bad, I'm such an imposter, then you might not be able to go back and say, I can do it. Because, or you can be like, oh, well, next time I'll do it, right? you don't take it too seriously and you just go, oh, this is a learning experience because everybody's going to fail sometime. And it doesn't mean it's going to stop you. It's going to, it just means that, oh, I just learned something. Mm. (laughs) So it's a, you know, you have to switch that way of thinking and all that. And yeah, I think uh, that about concludes what I was saying. (laughs) Thank you, Alyssa, for those points. (laughs) I have a thing. I also agree with this ask for help situation for lots of reasons, but mostly because I do it all the time. Um, and it's it's worked really well for me. And that's because it's, I think, I think people, when you show vulnerability, get really excited. They're like, oh, you're human, I'm human, and, and I can help. And I think people like helping people. And, and when you when you ask someone a question, it starts a conversation which can be a backwards and forwards. And it shows though that even though you're asking something that might seem like a weakness, you then, after that conversation, that person walks away knowing that you now, you know, have the answer to that thing and you can, you can jump off of that um, onto the next level, which would be the next question up. And that builds your confidence and it builds your um, strength. And it, it lets the people know around you <clears throat> what, what you do and you don't know. Um, and obviously, you know, juniors are going to hopefully be asking more questions. And, and as, as you get older and more senior, the questions start changing and becoming a bit more in depth. And, and that's OK, too. You don't you don't have to stop just because you reach to a certain level. But I just I think communication and asking is like the key, the key, the key, the key to figuring out where you stand in the environment you're in, because you also learn what other people don't know. And that gives you confidence because all of a sudden, you know, you ask someone, oh, how, how do you how do you key out the green screen in this? And, and if they're like, oh, I actually don't know. You're like, oh, thank God. Um, because I'm going to go find out and I'll come back and tell you. And then we can all do that together. So I think that's like, I think that's the key is, is no pun intended, but it's just ask, 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 ask. I, I don't think you can go wrong by asking. Yeah. Um, there was one, uh, I remember one time when I was doing a key and, there was a big um, shift in the 
X of the like the red channel, but you would have never known because it looked like a perfect blue screen. So you're keying this and then you get this weird outline and you're like, what's going on? And then you're you're sitting there for like 15 minutes and then you finally go and you know point it out to someone else. Finally, you ask a question and then they're like, oh yeah, I'm having the exact same trouble. I had to roto it. And then you're like, ah, oh, geez, I, you know, good thing I didn't just sit on this, right? Because oh, yeah. you find out and then you collectively go to the supervisor and go, hey, look, this is a problem with the footage. And they're like, oh, geez, this is worse than we thought, right? Because at on first glance, it looked like perfect blue screen. So right. Kind yeah, of and I bet um a lot of times um even as high up as like the director looking at the 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 dailies doesn't even know what the problem is. And the, when you realize that it's such a relief, you know what I mean? Like you're like, oh yeah, okay, cool. And and you feel good about yourself that like you're 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 brave enough to be that person who's just like does anyone else know what's going on? Everyone's like, no. And you're like, great, let's let's figure this out together, you know? And yeah, I think that's a really good point. Oh, yeah. Imposter syndrome, very real <laughs> all the time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think one, one thing that uh, someone told me when I started teaching and I had to teach courses that was not something I did in the industry. And I'm like, how do I give people tips and figure out what they're doing and all this kind of stuff when I've never done it in my life? And I was told, well, you now have the experience to know how to problem solve and choose the right materials to be their resources for them. So I can at least identify what's a good tutorial, what's a good article for them to read um, based on my past experience. So that was super helpful to me too. Mm. Um, I think our conversation, what we were just talking about, we were kind of uh, hitting on what happens next. So you're trying to build your confidence, you're trying to communicate, and you're trying to maybe move up and stay for a longer time at a place. So um, Laura, do you wanna talk about how you deal with finding mentors at work and uh, your experience with that? Yeah, of course. Uh, this is a topic I feel super passionate about. Uh, throughout my career, I've had many mentors. So that's kind of one of the big things is like, you can have multiple mentors for different stages of where you are in your career, where you are in life. Um, Mentorship is one of the things that once I started doing it, I really had a shift for me from thinking about my job to thinking about like my career. And it was like this big shift of realizing that I can kind of forge my own path, you know, and try and, you know, have a bit more control over the kind of, you know, work I want to do and the kind of steps I want to take. Um, you know, part of it too is like, oh, I want a mentor, but like, who do I ask, right? So like, how do you find a mentor? Um, you know, I've had mentors who are peers. So people at the exact same artistic level as me, um, you know, people more experienced than me, uh, you know, like uh, company leadership. Um, I've even sometimes had a mentor who's like someone fresh out of school who is younger than me, who had some sort of skill or knowledge base I didn't have, you know? So I think when you're looking for a mentor, you really should look for people who you admire, you know, people you can learn from and people you can potentially trust because obviously so much of this is you're asking for, you know, life. <laughs> it's not life coaching, but like career coaching. It's kind of, um, it's a big trust. And, you know, you have to always take that with a grain of salt that like not all the advice or all mentors that you might reach out to are gonna be the right fit for you. Um, so that's a big thing too, as you start trying to figure out who you want to mentor with, um, you know, having one-on-one -on -one conversations and seeing how you kind of vibe and how they answer your questions. Uh, Emma? Yeah, I think that's a really good point. I have had mentors who also don't know that they're my mentor, but like, and in that, in to respond to your, you know, someone younger than you, I mean, that's great. That's a great example. Because it doesn't, you think of a mentor, you know, you, it doesn't have to be someone who's, who's you know, done it before uh, or is older. It can be, uh, Morgane's actually a really good example. She came onto our team 
and I learned a lot from her and I, whether she knows it or not she was mentoring me because I was asking questions and um I think that's that's kind of okay too you, I think when you say to someone oh so can you be my mentor I think that actually makes it a really unnatural relationship um and and in a way it's good to have you don't you know I think when you say mentor it sounds like you just it's a bit of an Obi-Wan Kenobi situation you don't just need one you need many um and and I yeah I just really appreciated that point so I just wanted to say yeah that. I'm pretty sure I've never actually officially called someone a mentor outside of like an actual work mentorship program and I found that those have been the least successful mentorships I've ever had mm. are the ones that are like they're trying to trying to do an initiative and like it just never works because it's so forced mm. um I know there was a question about like how does a junior find a mentor uh so once you've kind of like this is what's worked for me so once you find someone that you think is really interesting or if someone you admire or have a skill that you don't have um as much as COVID has sucked it is a miracle of a time where you can pretty much get a zoom call with anybody <laughs> Um, if they have five minutes, because it doesn't require you to be in the same place. It just requires people to be where they are all day on their computer. Um, so really what I do that I find is really good is just like asking for a virtual coffee. You know, it's like a 15 minute, it's super low key just to get to know someone. So you never want to just jump in and be like, I want to spend an hour with you every week for forever. Like that's probably, probably way too much, but you know, you just start with a co a virtual coffee, get them to talk about themselves. People love talking about themselves. Um, and most of the time people, you know, I found that people really want to help each other. I mean, of course, every now and then there's a couple of those people who don't <laughs> want to help you and you don't want to be mentored by them anyways. Um, but and essentially after that, you just keep it going. You know, you say, it was great talking to you. Can I talk to you again? And then you just start talking about your own, you know, work concerns. And it might be good to formalize it a little bit. Because um, sometimes, depending if you're working with someone, you know, and you're having work problems or something, and you want a mentor for that reason, things can get a little weird. Like, you don't want to go like spilling all your, you know, your secrets about your boss or something to your boss's best friend or there's a, everyone knows each other. So it's definitely good to be aware of who you're talking to and just kind of setting those boundaries at the beginning. But, um, but yeah, I definitely agree. It doesn't have to be official. Um, so you can find someone at your studio. You can find someone at another studio. LinkedIn's a great way. Discord's a great way. <laughs> Plug, plug uh, WVFX if you want to try and find a mentor. Um, but I really think like casual networking uh, is really the way to go to try and find someone that you kind of jive with. Mm. Um, and for me, one of the biggest things as well to really kind of get the most out of it is like still go into it with a goal. You can talk to someone all day you want, but like until you know what you want out of that kind of relationship, you're not going to make progress, you know? Um, what are your goals for a mentorship? Do you want help to get enough skills to find a promotion, like get a promotion? Is that kind of your goal? Like how do you gain confidence? Um, or is it someone who you've seen leave the industry, come back, you know, from maternity leave and work-life balance? Like you can have mentors for a lot of different avenues of your career um, because there's a lot of things that aren't talked about unless you talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, that's very true <clears throat> it's also I, I found I've been mentored I, I a mentor found me uh, all of a sudden I was like ah oh, like I'm being mentored I didn't even realize it um which is cool because then that natural relationship is is very easy to to grow so just being aware I think of what's at work who's watching you and who's mm who's coming over and being like, how are you doing? What's going on? Do you need any help? Like, it, it doesn't always have to be something you need to seek out. Um, I think if you want, you know, if you want an official mentor, there's there's lots of, um, like, I, I think Anne's got a friend who has a mentorship program. WPFX has a mentorship channel. I know we've uh, hooked people up with each other. Um, so, you know, that could be a more official way to do it. Um, but yeah it's really mentors are very important and I think 
there's something that that sort of just happened um in terms of being confident and how to find a mentor confidently again it, it's all just about sort of being approachable at work being um being vocal being go to make some tea and talk to people around you what's going on and it, you know I think one of the reasons we started WVFX was because I was looking around and not seeing many other women who could be my mentor and in fact that is the, the backbone of WVFX is that I wanted some female mentors because all my mentors are men and they're great and they're fantastic and they've given me lots of confidence but if you can find someone you know who is sort of similar to you in that this conversation is about women find find a woman mentor because it, it, it's given me confidence seeing uh i'm you know i'm not a supervisor it, it gave me so much confidence seeing female supervisors on the discord and being like oh my god they exist they're here they're chatting and they're living their lives and this is crazy and then even to add to that they've got children well i've got a kid now and i'm like so you can be a supervisor and you can have a child mentor me now because i have no <laughs> idea how to do that it's something i want to do and i just need to know your, your head's not blown off um and that you're successful at it like how do you manage your time these are the questions i was having for these people like how you manage your time how do you supervise a team for a big show are, are you just doing little shows what what should i be expecting in my future and i think that's that's key is just is finding it doesn't have to be so official or whatever just find someone who has the answers to the questions you're looking for uh one last quick point on that one from me too is uh I know a lot of people have had people reach out to them, asking them to mentor them, you know, and people have come to me and they're like, I have nothing to give them. I recommended them to go talk to someone else. And this kind of goes with the whole confidence of like, you know, if someone's approaching you to mentor them, they're seeing something in you that, mm. you know, they're looking for. And it's just this idea that kind of goes back to what we're talking about is like having confidence, knowing your experiences and your advice are valid and like not being afraid to give back. Um, and that's just like a, a big thing about, you know, when a mentee comes to you is mm. do your best to say yes. Cause it also took them a lot to you probably ask for help. Um, so yeah, that's really important. This happened to me recently. Um, and I sort of came home and was like, oh, wow. Like I, I didn't realize this person actually is, is, is kind of dedicating a lot of time and energy into my career. Um, and it was quite scary to, you know, it's quite a high up person. And, and all of a sudden I was like, oh, cool. Like uh, I should really, I should pay attention. I say, I should say yes to this and, and, and find confidence in that I've, I've sort of been on their radar and, and chosen. Um, I think it's really easy to be on your box and put your head down and just think, oh, I need to, you know, get my shots out. I need to do this, I need to do that. Um, but I, I think confidence comes when you realize it's not just about your technical skills. It's about your personal ability and your 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 part of the fabric of the company, and you need to make that company a bigger and better place. So, whether you can use Photoshop like a pro, that's great, but you're not a computer; we're all human. So, where are you fitting into this? You know, this quilt. And if someone's saying, "Look, I want you to be the shining star on top of the tree," take that and run with it. And and whatever information they're giving you to get to that place. Just be there for it. Say yes, be confident. Be like, I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I don't just need to get these shots out the door. Yeah, I think that kind of goes really easily into our next topic, which is um, how do you, um, like you were just saying, you don't want to just like be a workhorse and just get your work done. How do you get noticed for that work and recognized for your skills? Um, and then talk to supervisors about getting promotions and increases and things like that, which are like really terrifying conversations to have and could go any way possible. Yeah, so, okay, so I'm gonna um, answer this as best I can. I've been thinking about this all week and I've been trying to approach it in so many different ways, um, but the best way I've found to sort of, because I don't have the, the, the magic slippers, the ruby slippers, click your heels, say this and that in this room when you have this chat to your mentors or 
to your supervisors and to your HR team. It's hard. In money chat is hard. Promotion work is hard. The truth is, it's hard if you don't know your value and or if your value hasn't changed for a long time. What I mean by this is generally you have these chats every year, right? You have the review that actually they never actually happen. You have to go to them and say, it's time for my review, right? That's, that's another part of being confident. Go ask for it. Don't wait. It's not going to come to you. And it's not going to come to you because they don't, you know, you're not appreciated. They're busy. They don't have time. Guess who's got time? You, because you're thinking about it all the time. The second I feel, I've spoken, you know, to people about this in the past and you sort of, you have your coworkers who kind of come to you, oh, I'm really kind of, I'm in, you know, sort of feel like I should have my review soon. To me, that's the day you should send the email being like, I want a review because you're feeling it. You're ready. You've obviously progressed and you've learned something. Um, anyway, <clears throat> run over. <laughs> The best thing to do is to work on your value, your personal value from day one. And as that year comes to an end, you've got to make sure that you've benchmarked and you've progressed in a way that adds to your value. Um, an example of this is in my first job when I became a DMP after being a brand, I was at the same company. Um, and it was my first, I, I, I'm sure everyone has the story. It's the first time you go interview somewhere else and you feel like you're cheating. You literally feel like you're cheating on a partner. Um, and it's nerve wracking, but the great thing about interviewing somewhere else um, is you get that value mark. You know, I was a junior and all of a sudden I've got a job offer from someone else saying, yeah, we, we, we want you. Go back to your, I went back to my employee uh, current job and said, you know, you know, someone else wants me. Confidence right there, hold on to that. And then what happens is your employer says, well, we'll match that, we'll keep you. So what I've got there is my base starting value. So 15 years later, I've built on top of that and I've built and I've built and I've built. And this is just constantly giving me confidence, right? Value, and this, this all does tie into having this chat, I promise. <laughs> value is based on your technical ability and your personal, your person, your, se your secondary ability. And that's your person, that's who you are. And that's why you're hired. When you go into that room to get that job, you know, I don't know how many people on here other have, have interviewed and, or have been to the interviewee, but when you're on the other side of the table and you're interviewing, you see people come through that door, really a lot of them have all the same skills, very similar profiles, but you're looking for that person who's gonna fit, right? So it's not just being technical, it's about your person, it's about who you are, and that is confidence. If we all are hired, I'm assuming everyone here sort of has a job, there's that confidence right there. And it's really important to remember that when you're in the office, you're not just a number, you're someone. And that someone can add value. And adding value to who you are as a person is, is as important and also maybe possibly easier than adding it technically. It needs to go hand in hand. Um, my second point moves on from that is once you've got your value, get your progression and your benchmarks going. Um, you want to progress in a way that's steady and you want to benchmark when you want that to happen. So for example, I did the Unreal Fellowship, right? So this was a great opportunity. Why? Because I just was like, great, this is going to progress me. This is going to be my talking point when I go in for that promotion chat, when I go in for that money chat, I can say, look what I've done. I've done this and I, I've given myself a time that I've, I've reached it. Um, and this is, this is, key because when you go into those talks if you you can't really go in there I don't know if everyone, anyone's ever tried this but you can't go in there and just say please can I have some more money because there's nothing to bounce off of you're not giving them anything to feed and and even if it's been time it's been a year and you've worked on a couple of shows they'll sort of maybe be like yeah you know two or three percent but that's not what you're wanting right you want them to say yeah of course you're brilliant here's loads of money and here's a promotion um, so you've got to give yourself that give yourself that control over when that chat's going to happen and what you're going to say in that chat by giving it uh, benchmarking a time and a skill you're bringing to that conversation because that's hard to say no to um also you do you, if you do learn something new you do feel confident afterwards you're like oh yeah then i know unreal I, I feel pretty good that's it's a little go me right like that's naturally you're going to feel better about it um and then, so my third 
part to this is then talking to people again asking those questions and making everyone understand your new value and that sounds really cocky but what i'm trying to say is open the conversations in your office start talking about what's possible how um, this new software this new technology can help everyone as a team progress and move forward and that what that does is he spreads these little seeds everyone's like oh you know what emma's the go-to person for this or emma was talking about this right that's really interesting and it starts this um this kind of uh what's the word reputation around the office which again should give you confidence and people should have confidence in you and you should feel that because they're coming to you um and and having these same conversations um so you want to make it no also i do feel like when you go and have a conversation about promotion or a raise a lot of the time the people you're talking to hr whatever they've done their research they know what you're doing in the office they've they've had reviews i mean i've been in conversations with them and just said oh yeah so and so did an amazing job and it's just come out my mouth because it's true um you want to be that person and so that's you got to put yourself in that in that spotlight and don't be shy about doing it um and i mean i feel like i'm sort of lecturing but in a way that's that's because this is what i do i just love talking to people in the office and i think it's really helped me um again i'm benchmarking myself against other people as well what do they know what do i know and it's just slowly layering on that value okay my value is this my value is this because da 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 da, da. um it also helps when you're comparing yourself to people in other companies as well what are your friends doing in the same department what is that company? Are they advancing as much as you guys are? Yes or no? Maybe. I don't know. Um, I'm a big fan of informational interviews um, because when you are forced to talk about yourself in an informational interview, it's, it's not a scary, you know, moment where you're trying to sell it to yourself. You're just kind of like, okay, cool. What are you about? And, it, and then they ask you questions and you start talking about yourself and all of a sudden you're like wow i didn't realize that was in me and it comes out and you hear it and it goes back in and you start repeating these positive things because in interviews generally you're quite positive about yourself right you, so that's you know it's it's just information gathering it's data gathering um which is constantly just building your value build your value keep going and then lastly a little note to uh <laughs> right so then we're here we've gathered information we had our starting value. It's been a year. I've reached my benchmarks, told everyone how amazing I am at the office, <laughs> at the tea, um, and I'm ready for this chat. What you've done is you've literally, you've trained for the marathon that whole time. Because you've trained, now you're in the room having this conversation. The conversation kind of happens on its own. Um, you're not just going in there saying, you know, please, sir, can I have some more? It's more of a natural discussion about what your vision is for how you want to go forward, um, what their vision is for how they want you to go forward and aligning those two. And those conversations from when you're a junior of just kind of like, uh, yeah, can I, can I stay, but also can I have some more money? So then when you're more confident and you're older and it's more of a, hey, I really want my career to go in this direction. And I've done some work to make it go in that direction. I, I've done this, done this fellowship and I've, I've learned this new skill or I really got to like Houdini, um, even though I know I'm a map painter, but I'm really liking where that's moving for environments. And I, I think that's where I belong. Even though in a way I'm, I'm sort of saying to them, I don't just want to be a map painter. I'm showing them that I'm a person who can grow, a person who's interested in, in, in making the company grow and the team grow as a whole. Um, and, and, and showing them I'm confident to step out of my box and to keep moving forward. And then usually what happens, the big money question is, you know, it's an, it's an, awkward, it's an awkward conversation to have, right? But it's hard for them to say, sorry, we can't really give you any more because you've just shown them your value is, is way high. Um, and if you've gone and you've spoken to other companies in the industry, you can say, look, to be fair, I, I know my value is more. I, I've spoken to people about it and this is what's happening. Um, and that's, that's sort of, yeah, I mean, that's basically what, what I would do and what I do do. And it, 
it's it's difficult because obviously junior to senior introvert extrovert I'm quite an extroverted person so it does come quite naturally but I think if you start with these points and just focus in on on doing little things throughout your career eventually you're going to feel confident whether you like it or not um and that's that's really that's 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 it <laughs> cool uh I was going to do our last question unless Laura you had something I know you had your hand up <laughs> oh sorry okay. yes, oh, no. she said she said everything beautifully it, I'm totally good <laughs> um we had one last question before we open it up to everyone. So if you do have questions and you want to start either raising your hand or putting it into the chat, we can go down the line for them. Um, but an optional question, since we're kind of low on time for the panelists, um, if there is like an exact moment that you remember um, your confidence was sparked and changed your mindset in the workplace, uh, like maybe realizing you're not at a junior level anymore or um, something else happened that you feel like you can move on to another company and be successful elsewhere, something like that. Does anyone have anything they'd like to share? Um, sure. Yeah. Um, I, so it wasn't really in the visual effects where I got a huge amount of confidence. I have to say it was probably with the airline job because the job itself entailed telling people what to do. Like uh, you're an operations agent, you coordinate an aircraft rotational process. So when you're doing that, you have to know, sound like you know what you're doing. If you sound really unsure, you're like, well, maybe that should go to that gate. Then people are like, does it go to that gate or not, right? So you mm -hmm. have to be very sure in the way you sound, whether or not you're always feeling sure and you have to make the decision and then stand by your decision. So. That was a way, that was a place where over time, not just one moment, but over time I got the confidence and then realized that maybe if I spoke with more confidence and then as I got more knowledge, I just became more confident with that knowledge. Um, that would be my turning point. I really like that because it is, it's, I'm quite an indecisive person. So I'm just constantly, and then sometimes you just got to make that decision, just go for it. And I suppose if you're doing that on a regular basis as a, as a what, was, what was the job title? The airport, the, air, the operations. Airport, the operations. If you're doing that over and over again, it probably leaks into your personal life. Yeah. You know, even if it's, you know, just trying to figure out what cup of tea you want in the morning, <laughs> lemon, lemon, ginger or regular, it's all of a sudden you're like, just regular, I don't have time for this. You know, it's just, that's great. I really, I'm going to try and be more like that. I think mine was, similar to Anne's in that it wasn't one particular moment it was it was a build-up of over time I had a really strong mentor um when I first jumped into production and uh she really really built my confidence up over you know the I think it was the last year I was at this place for about three years and the last year she was there for and she really really helped build me up and then I it actually got to the point where I felt like I wasn't going to progress anymore at that company and you know I'd spoken to them and had chats about pay rises or going into different directions or you know whatever and it just wasn't happening quick enough for me and then I made the decision to go freelance and I think it was at that point maybe I was a bit I had some confidence in myself to be like well if I think I'm good enough for these things that I'm asking the company I'm at for you know and if I think that I am good at what I do, I can make it on my own, you know, so I handed in my notice, didn't have any jobs lined up and it was jumping into freelance and then getting some more jobs after that, I think really helped make me realise, oh, actually I am good at what I'm doing because I'm getting work and I'm being asked to go back to other companies and I think that was, yeah, but it was a slow process to get to that point. It was doing the job for a while, having that mentor, and then pushing myself, you know, because even though I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to go freelance because I, I can do this job. You still have a little bit of self-doubt, but I think that's a little bit of that uncertainty is probably good for you. You know, they say, oh, you should do something that scares you every day, you know? So I think nobody's, yeah, nobody's perfect at their job. Everybody makes mistakes and, you know, it's these mistakes and 
failures, which are always temporary, that sort of help build you up to get better and better at what you do. Yeah, that's a good point. Being scared. <laughs> Don't be scared of being scared. Use it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so yeah. it's to say, but I mean, I I definitely agree with that. I think a big thing for me was like my first job. You know, you're still trying to figure out stuff, figure out where you land, how much you know. But I definitely feel like from that first job at Studio A, going to that second job at Studio B is such a big step for for me, and I know for a lot of my friends, it's been like realizing that your skills do transfer you know, that you have knowledge outside of that certain studio. Because I know for a long time, people will like stay at studios as long as they can. But I do feel like making that change is like an important part of your career is to know that you're not beholden to that one place, that your knowledge is good anywhere. And it's, I, for me, that was my big step was moving to my second studio. I realized, you know, I can do this. I can go anywhere, mm -hmm. you know, and that was a big, a big moment for me. Great. So there's a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, Morgan is asking, uh, do you have any techniques to help you maintain your self-confidence? Um, I don't know. I do. Um, one thing that I do is that I learn more. And I, what I mean by that is like, for instance, um, uh, I guess just recently when I got into this Unreal job, um, I was pulled in for something that I wasn't very good in Unreal for. Like I, at the fellowship, really loved doing de like the environment setups and stuff like that. So I told my company, I was like, this is what I'm good at. And this is, I, you know, focused on materials and making landscapes. And they said, okay, good. Can you do animation? And I was, you know, like, I, or, and just like volume capture, reality capture stuff. And I was like, something I know nothing about. So, what I did was um, to get my confidence in that, I just asked everybody there, what's the documentation on how you do the reality capture process? Read up on that, read up on how to put something in, learned about the process, and then did it and gained confidence. And now I'm the only one who knows how to put it all together in like this one program that we used to do it at the end. So like, it's a matter of learning and then that's one way, that's not the only way, but that's one way I do maintain confidence is that I learned a new skill and then do it. Yeah, going outside of your comfort zone, it's definitely, you know, doing that thing that's new. I'm constantly doing things that are different or new and, and I'm always like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. And, my mum said to me the other day, actually, she's like, why are you nervous? You always do new things and you always get the job done, you know, and it's true. And it's, it, it, you are always a bit like, oh, am I going to be able to do this? But unless you do it, you don't know. Um, and I think because I've done that so many times now, I, I, I embrace it a bit better than I used to, for sure. I think also, more, uh, Morgan, is the confidence. If, I mean, I'm not confident about a lot of things but I am confident about the things I wasn't confident about before I learned how to be confident about them. So as much as you just want, you know, oh, can I just be confident all the time? What's gonna happen is you're not even gonna realize that you're now confident about the things you were insecure about before. But as you get older and the things change, you're like, okay, I need to gain confidence in this way now. Um, but you know, what, what will happen is that your coping mechanism for, um, for the anxiety of not being confident will get stronger and better. And you can then rely on the fact that you know how to go from being, you know, shaky and ah to being very much like, cool, I'm in, I'm in charge, I'm in power. I've done this before. I know how to, I know my body and my brain know how to do this. Even if your thoughts um, aren't necessarily, you know, confident thoughts all the time, um, you'll, you'll eventually build um, workflows. Is, I think I, I do anyway. When I'm feeling insecure, all of a sudden I'm like, cool, I'm going to get out of this because I've done it before. And I still feel that way now, even after, yeah, working in the industry for 15 years. Um, uh, I hope that helps. Yeah, I've struggled with confidence for a long, long time. And I found that like, even if I'm not confident in myself, I surround myself with people who I trust, who can be like a sounding board for me. Um, so if I ever feel like I'm like, ooh, maybe I'm not right about this idea or like this isn't going to work I always go to those people and kind of 
you know, you have your support network, um, people who understand the industry and know kind of what it is you're talking about. And, uh, you know, and they're there for you and they'll rally for you and they'll help you regain your confidence. So like, it's, it doesn't have to all be on you. You know, you can definitely rely on others to help hold you up. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about this community and just about, you know, some of the relationships you can forge in this industry is, uh, you know, we can't just make a movie by ourselves. So it's, it's exactly. about relationships and um, helping each other. I like how you keep bringing it back to that. You're so right. I always, I keep, you know, 100%. That's why we're here. That's what this panel is. This is our confidence. You know, we can all help each other be confident for sure. Cool. And Jessica has a question. Uh, any tips to stop comparing yourself to others? Um, like imposter syndrome when you're when you're seeing where others are within your role so I guess comparing yourself to others your peers um, and yeah how do you stop comparing Maybe yourself I should to others? explain what I tried to <laughs> attempt to chime <laughs> I tried <laughs> Um, so basically, when you're saying about like sort of look around and see how others are doing within your field and what they're sort of at and everything, how do you stop yourself from kind of going down a like imposter syndrome, maybe like negative on yourself route? If you're trying to build your confidence and then you're like, oh, well, everyone else is doing amazing, or if I'm not <laughs> doing, like, how do you how do you separate those two with almost like market research and then not like making yourself feel terrible? <laughs> Um, I'm going to go first because I, I'm very passionate about this topic. I, how, how, how can I explain this? Basically, just don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Screw everyone else. So everyone else. Okay. You don't need to look at your neighbor. There's, 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 I mean, I'm a bit Jekyll and Hyde about this. Competition is great because it forces you to do something about it. You're like, oh crap, Daniel or Diane is very good at this thing I'm doing and they're gonna give her more money than me. I better get better at it. And you know, hopefully then you do get better at it. So that, that's a healthy competition. At the same time, I, I, I don't think comparing yourself to others is, is a very healthy thing to do because you are Jess, right? You are Jessica. No one else can be Jessica. I can't be Jessica. I can't do what you do. I can't do what you do technically. And I can't do what you do as a human. That's why I was talking about you as a person is, is an employee is important as well. Because you've got unique skills that Diane doesn't have. And those are the skills you should be honing in on. The time you're spending energy-wise in your head, comparing yourself to Diane, you should be thinking about what can Jess do better what is my um, um, skills that, that this person doesn't have or that makes me me? I also just don't believe, I think in our industry, there's a lot of kind of like, well, it's my turn to be promoted kind of thing. Well, no, it's not. You don't know the relationship that person has with HR, with management. You don't know what, maybe you do, I don't know. But you know, no one knows what happens in that room, really. It's only that person and the other uh, and the other management in that room. So don't compare yourself to them and be like, well, they're next to be promoted. I better do whatever they're doing and get behind them. There's no, that doesn't exist to me. Just go for it. And and remember that when you're in that, when you're in that position, they're talking to you. They're not talking to you based on the people around you. And that, that's my little rant. One thing I definitely want to add is that like, I don't think you're alone. <laughs> I know I'm a huge person that struggles with this as well. And I know a ton of people who struggle with imposter syndrome, even though like my job is the highest job I can do at my studio technically. So like, you know, I'm in a pretty good place, but like, I'm still looking at my friend over here doing this other thing. And I think that's just one of the downsides of social media, you know, downsides of, you know, virtual, all I see of anyone is what they present to me now. You don't really see the real stories or real life kind of behind the scenes. Um, so I think it's always just taking it with a grain of salt as well. Like we're all human, we're all gonna, you know, envy and slightly be jealous, but like at the end of the day, you can only control 
what you can control as much of your life. Um, so just, you know, I definitely just wanted to say you're not, you're not alone in that, uh, that <laughs> feeling. And use that, use that emotion and energy to help you drive forward. For sure. Like use what's coming to you naturally. If, if you are feeling envious of your desk partner, well, bloody make sure you're better than them then because that's what's going to get you your confidence and your notice. Um, and that's what's, you know, going to drive you forward. All right, we have a hand up. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to add to this point, actually. I find that um, if you do find somebody better than you, a great way is to just collaborate with them mm. and just to find a way you know, to see what do you have that probably they don't have and then from, you know, form a bond, a relationship where you can share and learn and then grow together. So I think that's one way I've dealt with this issue in the past and I found it really helps. That's great. That's really good. Great. I, so does anyone else have, oh, Andy, do you wanna? No, I was just gonna say, um, I also have imposter syndrome quite often. And um, one of my, so two of my solutions is I, knowledge is power. Again, I come to the learning and knowledge is power. So then I find myself trying to learn what I'm insecure about. Like if I'm insecure about keying, then I try to learn a few more techniques, et cetera, et cetera. And then the second thing I do do is that I find sometimes you're in a company where the work culture is quite harmful to you and you get imposter syndrome because for instance through no fault of your own like you could be just ignored or forgotten and then that feeling of being forgotten is actually the worst feeling right you feel like oh I'm so not important that I'm totally not visible to people so then you change work cultures where they can they actually start appreciating you and then that actually helps with imposter syndrome a lot <laughs> the white right work culture is very important yeah I mean I, that's I this side, so but <laughs> Yeah, you, finding the right place because companies have pers personalities as well as we do. Every every studio has a personality, and not every studio is right for you just because it's right for someone else. And and you know, big studios, small studios, there's benefits to every one. So it's really good to gain confidence is to have a bit of a shop around, see where you fit in. And I think when you do find a place that you 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 feel is your place, is your personality. Um, all these kinds of things fall into place for you and your your chats end up being quite natural with management um, and and it works in your favor. It, they, people end up pushing you up um, and that can be different. That could be a big company for someone and a small company for someone else. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I feel like my confidence goes down the longer I do something and I'm not learning anything new. So like, I feel like I'm always, kind of like Anne, trying to redefine my role in what I'm doing and always trying to learn something new and kind of like jumping into a new role that's really scary and I'm not completely prepared for, but then like making my way up and learning and being supported by a team. And I feel like that really helps me re-get engaged into what I'm doing. But like if I'm just sitting there doing like VFX bids and just filling in Excel docs or rotoing all day, like I'm not feeling like I'm learning anything and I'm just like punching the clock. So uh, that would be my addition to always keep learning, just like Ann said, and um, pushing yourself into places you're uncomfortable. Yeah, 100%. Cool. So unless there's any other questions, I was going to wrap it up and end the recording. And then if anyone wants to hang out after, um, we can do that. So I wanted to thank everyone for joining us for our first event. Oh, is this a, okay. Not a question. <laughs> um, so thank you all. Uh, we're planning another event in a couple months. So towards the end of the year. So look out on Discord for details on that. Um, Emma or I might be reaching out to see if you wanna be a panelist based on what our topic's going to be. Um, so hopefully there's a lot of people in here. Um, hopefully there's a topic that you really wanna see us do. And if so, even if you don't wanna be a panelist, um, 
letting us know what you want us to talk about um, is very helpful. So reach out. Um, and I want to thank all of our panelists again for sharing their experiences with us today and for everyone else that was able to join and those watching this virtually uh, or post recording, whatever. Um, so we'll continue the conversation on Discord and we'll have a new one in December, January. And again, if anyone wants to hang out, um, if you wanna do breakout rooms and meet with people individually or in small groups, I can manage that. Or if you just wanna hang out in the main room, we can just chat for a little bit more. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. High five. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.